Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Bible Study. This is Bible Study episode 43. Today we're diving into John chapter 19 verses 28 through 37. Today we have Brother John and Brother Manny. To begin, we're going to start off with a prayer by me and we're going to end off with a prayer by Brother Manny. If you guys can, just please bow your heads and close your eyes. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you, God. We thank you as now as brothers are coming together to read your word, God. I pray that iron will be able to sharpen iron, God. We pray that we'll be able to discuss your word, God. Get a better understanding of your word, God. Continue to shape each other, to continue to learn from each other and piggyback off of each other to have a better understanding of your word, God. We pray that you'll speak to everybody in here today, God. In Jesus' in your holy name, amen. The death of Jesus. Jesus knew that his mission was now finished. And to fulfill scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put it on a hyssop branch, and held it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. It was a day of preparation, and the Jewish leaders didn't want bodies hanging there the next day, which was the Sabbath, because it was, because it was Passover. So they asked Pilate to hasten to hasten their deaths by ordering that their legs be broken. Then their bodies could be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke their legs of the two men crucified with Jesus. When they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. So they didn't break his blood. One of the soldiers, however, pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water flowed out. These things happened in fulfillment of the scripture that say not one of his bones would be broken and they will look on the one, they, and they will look on the one Years. Amen. Thank you for reading the scripture, Brother Manny. Thank you. The first question I have is for verses 28 to 30. Um, it mentioned that Jesus drinking the wine is a fulfillment of the scripture. Where did it mention in the Bible that Jesus would drink wine on his cross before he died? All right. So in, uh, in essence, actually, as I uh, look in my Bible study and Bible study app, it references actually going back to Psalm chapter 69, uh, verses 21 to 26. Let me just read just a couple of those verses, 21 and 22. Uh, in that particular uh, passage of scripture, it's saying, they gave me poison for food. And for my thirst, they gave me sour wine to drink. Uh, let the own table be before them, become a snare. And when they are at peace, let it become a trap. And it also speaks to even to how he died. Um, we'll come back to that this question later on as well when it talks about his legs not being broken because that also was prophecy. But the way that the Lord's uh, crucifixion was to be um, was very meticulous. I don't know. I guess that's the best way I can describe it. It was very um, destined uh, to be a connection between the whole scripture from the old and the new. Uh, that it will come together and be an actual divine experience. So even though it was, I remember a couple of weeks ago, we talked about him being flogged um, him throughout the process. He's being spat on. Everything had his detail put out there, but it was destined that he would drink something sour at that particular time. No, wow. you, you, you did. Cause I, I, I knew probably somewhere in the Bible it mentioned it because it kind of mentions all everything that's going to happen. Um, Cause we see, especially uh, going into the crucifixion, Jesus can mention that all of this is the fulfillment of the scripture. So I knew it was mentioned before. I just didn't know where. Thank you so much for that. But John, do you have any thoughts on Brother Just Jesus coming to the completion of uh, the, the reason why he was on this earth. I think it's a goal that all of us as Christians want to do. You know, do what we've been called to do on this earth. There's actually a couple of things actually to, to bring out from those uh, few verses here actually to, um, to remember all right, so, you know, we talked about the scripture where he's talking about he's thirsty and they gave him the sour drink. But also, too, we got to remember, too, um, what I like, or at least just for overall bringing some of the word together, is verse 29, where they had the jar of sour wine. Uh, they put a sponge and they held it on with a, on a hyssop branch. Um, what jumps out to me, at least to remember with that, remember what hyssop represents. Hyssop represents purification. It represents sanctification. It represents holiness. If you remember, or uh, if you go through the scriptures together, I believe it's Psalm 51, um, in the, or somewhere, I know definitely in the book of Psalms, um, it's speaking about, you know, they were saying, purge me with hyssop. 
So hyssop itself was something that is used to cleanse. It's something to use to purify and sanctify, or at least to represent that too. And I think that also goes with the sour wine. The sour wine at that particular time was medicinal. It wasn't like a regular wine like we know today to just drink something. Hey, let's get litty litty. This was something that had a purpose. So in that particular time, the Lord is pretty much showing us, even in his death, there was a purpose in that, in the wine itself, uh, being drunken within there. So as yeah. we keep going from there, um, keep in mind as well that when the Lord received all of this at the end, remember um, what is so profound is when he drank that wine, he's pretty much saying, with this, I seal this moment. With this, I seal what I came for. So he drank the wine and he said, it is finished. And he dropped and he gave up his spirit. He gave up the ghost. According to the other gospels, you see other accounts towards that same story, a little bit more exhausted. But the Lord's pretty much saying, hey, I went through all of this just so at the end of the day, you can see that it's all purified, it's all covered, it's all been given to me, and it's finished. It's done. You don't have to worry about anything else. I can give up my spirit now. So it's, I just want to make sure we, we touch that uh, for sure mm. when we talk about his death. Uh, for sure, but it's the power of purification, the power of the blood, even with the wine. A lot of times the wine signifies blood, even for us in our modern day church, you know, look at the Lord's Supper and what that's supposed to represent. Um, even if we compare even in the Psalms and even towards, like I said, the Last Supper or even the Lord's Supper now, um, as we celebrate now, it's all representing the blood. All of these things speak to the blood, the covenant of the blood, the shedding of the blood for the remission of sins, the power of the blood to cleanse. Remember, we said wine, wine being inside. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood. All of it to speak towards washing and purifying us. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I definitely didn't catch that um, that symbolism. So, I mean, that, it means much more to me now. You know, just hearing that. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for, yeah. for that, Brother John, for educating the young folks. Bring your jerk season into the Bible study. Amen. Um, the, the following question I have, second question, is for verse 31 to 33. Why did the soldier break the men's leg? And is there any significance behind breaking their leg? Let's take a look at something real quick. But I know for sure, um, was looking at the crucifixion, remember uh, the way it is, is they, they, were, they were stretched out. Like we know the pictures are say, they had the nails in the hands and there were also nails in the feet. But underneath the feet, there was like a, a little like uh, shelf type thing. So um, they were there, but they also had a, a little bit of a way to rest uh, through there um, as well. And what would happen was uh, to kind of um, expedite the process, you could knock off that, that particular little shelf and even to the point, even like I said, breaking the legs because now the weight now falls more. And uh, with the weight falling, um, it also stopped their breathing more too. So it's almost like you fall and in a way suffocate uh, a lot quicker. And what that's the fulfillment with that is pretty much saying when it comes to Jesus, um, you're not going to touch this process, I guess, in the essence of saying for symbolism, you're not going to touch this. This is a holy event. You're not going to uh, break his legs. You're not going to touch his body. Um, it's going to be done. It's going to be done. You're not going to have any hand of it. Your hand is just to follow God's divine plan according to it. And bear with me. There is a scripture that says it, but um, let me see if I can get that real, real quick. Right, I don't know if Manny got something, but yeast. Um, I think that's why they say death where is your sting, because that Jesus didn't die the way that he could have died, you know, just as just like um, you know, regular people that were being crucified. So I think that's one of the reasons why they say death where is your sting, because he didn't have, he didn't die how he should have died. Right. Yeah. So it goes back to actually uh, by virtue of cross reference to Deuteronomy chapter twenty one, uh, starting at verse twenty two. Uh, it says, and if a man has committed a crime punishable by death, and he is put to death, and you hang him on a tree, speaking of the cross, his body shall not remain all night on the tree, but you will bury him the same day. For a hanged man is cursed by God. You shall not defy your land that the God, uh, the land, the, excuse me, the Lord your God has given you for an inheritance. So pretty much it's just pretty much saying, hey, he already took the curse. He already took the curse. The curse as far as sin and death, the punishment is already on there. Um, don't touch him. You're not going to touch him. Don't touch the Lord. He's sacred. Don't touch the Lord. I always like, I always like and appreciate there's always some significance behind the works of Jesus, the works of God. 
and it's so amazing to learn. It makes you understand it better and just put two and two um together. The third question I have for you is coming from verses 34. Why did they pierce Jesus in his side? I know the symbolism as far as the blood and the water, but as far as why, I think it um, might be maybe more so part of verification. I'm not 100% sure um, at least the why they did it, but I know part of the purpose would have been just pretty much verifying that he's gone. Um, and in a way, I call it fulfillment of scripture as well. I mean, remember that um, one of the main scriptures we always hear, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. Um, the chastisement of his peace is upon us and by his stripes we're healed. Um, and part of it, even depending on what translation is saying, he's bruised for our iniquity or he was um, wounded for our transgressions. Part of it, even in that scripture text, is speaking of him being pierced. So the Lord's body was pierced uh, for us as well. Um, but that's going way probably way into the, the land of symbolism and allegory, but more so it was just to verify his death, verify that he is gone. Um, and more so too, if he wasn't already dead with piercing him, it would have caused him to bleed to death as well. They were really trying to get that process over with. Yeah, remember we talked about this a, a few weeks ago um, when it was, I think it was just a small group and even the bigger group. Um, these people, they, they wanted to kill the Lord before they had Passover. They wanted to they want to commit murder before they went to church. How amazing is that? <laughs> That's crazy. I, I, how crazy is that? I, I, I have church, so I need to kill you now. I need to make sure you're, you're judged. I need to make sure you're sentenced. And I need to make sure you're sent to death so I can go to church on time, in essence. Mm. Don't make me tangent. Makes me sometimes think of the list we have before we come to God. Like, nah, I got to do this. I mean, I'm going to go to church tomorrow, I mean, but let me just have my Saturday. Let me do my thing, and then I'm going to get everything right, you know? It's almost like, um, it's like, I'm sorry, but I'm, I am still got to do what I got to do, you know? Oh, I got to do what I got to do to make it look like I do the right thing, um, but within my heart. And I always say all things come back to the heart. Um, always, as, as bloody and as gruesome as the actual death of the Lord is, it's beautiful at the same time. It's like, look at how much life was able to come through that one particular event. Um, mm. I have to stop myself sometimes. I, it's funny. You can read the word uh, in so many different ways. And some sometimes, you know, I'm triggered to look at it as, ah, oh, we really can be so caught up in ourselves. We get really get caught up in, and even applying it to today, I always like to say, we can get so caught up in church that we can just miss the whole thing if we're not careful. We can kill somebody just for the sake of, I have Bible study tonight. I you know, and do whatever we got to do. Um, but I love, I, I love the story of the Lord all together because it brings humility too. Um, look how many times we, we ready to fight someone for saying something about us on Facebook. Somebody put a status about us and we ready to go jump off the hill, um, go down mm -hmm. the road and knock them out. But the Lord's yeah. getting hit, beaten and bruised and persecuted. He's getting sentenced to death for it crime he didn't commit all because he loved us where to do that at it's, it's it's an amazing story it's an amazing account and it's it's an amazing reflection that in in essence when you know even if you were to picture in your mind the bruised body of jesus hanging on the cross that blood had your name on it at the end of the day so it's a beautiful thing yeah. and i'm gonna jump ahead and before i get as my next question because of course when they pierced them blood and water came out it's not just that blood came out it was blood and water, um, another symbolic uh, instance. So the blood, of course, and what we we're talking about earlier, the washing, the blood has washed us, the water has purified us, the water has brought life. And you can tell distinctively that there's two separate divide, um, excuse me, separate um, uh, liquids in there. And um, I'm going way far, and I'm, uh, I, I submit this to my, my biblical scholars and elders, but I noticed something even in this immediate moment. So what was Jesus' first miracle? Turn water, water, water into wine. Turn water into wine. That was his first miracle. As he died, what was the last thing he drank? Wine. Oh. What came out of his body? Water. Oh. And wine, right? No, no, no! I did. Hold on, brother John. I'm going to interrupt you. I've never, I've never put those two and two together because I know his first miracle was turn water into wine, but I never put together that 
The live thing he drunk was wine, and when they pierced his body, or they can't. Oh, you get it? It wasn't blood yeah. And wine. It was blood and water. Yeah. Nah, that's crazy. Blood and water came out. The blood still works. Mm. So it's almost like a reverse, kind of. But it's a reverse, but I don't understand, I don't understand why it was reversed. If that makes sense. Which is a valid question. All I can see to it being is just, it all goes with the power of the blood. The blood washes, the blood cleanses. Mm-hmm. Um, we might not understood it uh, at the first miracle, but the last miracle, pretty much saying, I'm bringing life. I'm bringing life. I give you this water. And even sometimes, depending on who you speak with, as far as the scholars, um, when they say the water turned into wine, some question if it even fermented or turned into actual, like the color of juice, things like that. It might have just been that the taste might've been affected, but nonetheless, it was wine and the wine was symbolic of his blood and his blood washed and his blood cleansed. And at the end of it, it goes signifying what he said is finished. So as they pierced him, the blood came out and the water came out to show the job was done. The purpose of the wine has been sent forth and the purpose of the wine has been fulfilled. Wow, the wine symbolizing the blood. The wine symbolizing the blood. And also to remember uh, one of the things we call Jesus is the living water. John, I was saying, Jesus came into the world by blood and loved the world by blood. That's the connection I'm going to make. Amen. Because, you know, when women give birth, it's like bleed with the whole kid coming out. That's why I say he came in by blood. And then he got crucified, which he believed, so he loved by blood. Yeah. Came in I by blood. You, you ain't loved. lying. That is true. And it brings to, actually, I want to throw out there, and then uh, I'll leave it to um, First John 5, uh, 6 through 8, just to throw out there for reference. This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. So in essence, too, is also showing um, the presence of the Holy Spirit as well and the union between um the holy spirit and the father even sometimes actually uh imagery bringing together the water when jesus was baptized we saw the spirit so it's all just pretty much painting to the great picture um of who god is i'm thankful for our leaders like brother john for able to see the bible from a different way and give it a different perspective to be able to better understand the scripture because there's a lot of things that from my young eye i can't I can't see. And from a leader standpoint, um, Brother John is able to point out. So thank you so much for that, Brother John. The last question I have is for verses 36 through 37 is where in the Bible did it mention that no one did not one of his um, bones will be broken? It's a direct reference, at least just uh, as a reference to Exodus chapter 12, verse 36, that says it shall be eaten in one house. Uh, you should not take any of the flesh outside the house and you should not break any of its bones. But what is that speaking to? Ah, it's speaking of the Passover. Remember we had talked about before, Jesus is represent, uh, representative of the Passover lamb. Uh, let mm-hmm. me just back it up a little bit uh, for that particular chapter, uh, Exodus 12, verse 43, for a greater context. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, this is the statue of the Passover. No foreigner shall eat of it. But every slave that is bought uh, for money may eat of it after you uh, have circumcised them. No foreigner or hired worker may eat it. It shall be eaten in one house, and you shall take, uh, excuse me, you shall not take of any other flesh outside the house, and you shall not break any of its bones. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. If a stranger shall sojourn with you and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised. And it goes on from there. But it's all putting together towards the coming of the Lord. And him being symbolic of being the Passover lamb. I mean, remember, um, that's the main thing they were trying to get this done for. They, they mm. to go and um, observe the Passover feast. That one bone. And let me see. I think there's another reference here to have. Let me see if this has what this is saying. Another verse is pretty much referring to the statue of the Passover. That's actually will be one of the rules then uh, for then. That there will be no 
uh, broken bones for them. And even uh, looks like here there is a reference for First Corinthians chapter five, verse seven, which says specifically, "Cleanse out the old leaven that you may be a new lump, as you are." Or excuse me, you really are unleavened. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. So it all speaks to the fact uh, towards Passover. Uh, that's why, even though we're not uh, Jewish, we we still ought to observe and honor these kind of things, or at least in historical context, to know about it. Because at the end of the day, the Lord Himself, um, even without using that last scripture reference, we we see Him to be in these last couple of chapters throughout this journey towards the cross. He's our Passover Lamb. He was the sacrifice. He's been the sacrifice to atone us to the Father. So you can't break the bones of the Lamb. Wow. That was, that was crazy. That was crazy. It really is. The lamb bones cannot be broken. And even to... Let me add, hey, I, I know we were joking before we started recording. I said, you can't sneeze on the digital Bible or even the old school Bible. If you got Get a good Bible to study that can give you references to help you out. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, verse 37 was talking about they'll look at him. That actually is speaking in, in scripture as well. Uh, Zechariah 12 and 10, and I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and pleas for mercy, so that when they look on me, on him, and uh, excuse me, on whom, which they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only child, and weep bitterly over him as one weeps over a firstborn. And then we see in the scriptures, um, it, the whole account was prophesied. The whole account was written out. Um, we didn't understand it, and even uh, what I love about God is even even though the, I guess the life that we live now might not be the Bible, but we know mm. that the same author that wrote the Bible writes life now. And everything that happens now, or even, even before we're even seeing now, things that happened in history since the time of the Bible, we're able to write the prophesy to the time that we're in today. And the day that we're in today, God writes and he knows the details to write towards the details for tomorrow. I'll be praised. Yeah, and I'm, yes, sorry, yes. Mm. It almost seems like when he said it is finished, it meant so much more. Like I could be wrong, or this is my own interpretation. When he said it is finished, maybe he was saying it is finished for all of us, you know. Uh, God came onto this earth to save us and, you know, maybe... A, uh, a crucial part of our story is being written is um, him, sacrificing, him sacrificing himself for us, you know, in our story. And that, that's actually what scripture says. I believe it's in Colossians uh, or at least somewhere in the epistles. Um, mm-hmm. Christ came, died once and for all um, that we don't have to, I mean, imagine, imagine in 2021, we still have to observe the Passover by pre- um, presenting the Passover lamb or pre- making the certain uh, offerings, the burnt offerings and the grain offerings and all these different things. Imagine if that was still something we had to do now. You have to tweet at nine o'clock, but you know, you gotta be careful because at 9.30, you gotta go to the, to the priest and you gotta sacrifice your bull. Or if you come towards Passover, you gotta find the right lamb uh, for sacrifice Jesus became it for all of us. And it is. When he said it is finished, he's mm-hmm. saying, no more going forward where you have to worry about this. I have taken care of it. It's finished. Mm-hmm. It's done. I fulfilled what my father said. I fulfilled what the word says about me. I fulfilled what the word says I would do. Live. Mm-hmm. Live in me. Live in grace. Live through the spirit. It's, it's all come back towards the reminder of the whole story. God's always been in control. He's in control. He's in control. He's in control. Thank you so much um, to both of you for the connections, the revelations, different thoughts, different opinions of the scripture that we have discussed today. Thank you so much. Any any thoughts, any opinions um, before? I, end? I mean, I just say thank you for you know, the opportunity to come on here, you know, just learn. And it's also an opportunity for me to just be inspired to, you know, go into the word more. You never know. It's, it's not always just answer questions so that you can look good, but um, you know, you want to know your Bible, you want to know your word, and be able to share that with others, share the some of those what things back, you know. So thank you for the opportunity. I say know Jesus for yourself. Um 
one thing that I was I was actually kind of jumping off what Manny's saying. One thing that I learned um, as a young person, as a younger whippersnapper, uh, before <laughs> the beard grew in, uh, is actually, and I, I greatly encourage it, and I, I kind of stutter with saying it because I know some hear it and and kind of take it as controversy, but at the same time, I, whatever. Um, don't just receive what someone teaches you. And matter of fact, even this morning um on my church's prayer call we have prayer every saturday at 6 30 or 3 30 um that mm. uh, my pastor as he said the same thing you know he said you know know god for yourself don't just take what someone is teaching and preaching to you for uh, what it is but be able to go into the scripture itself um thank god for sound teachers thank god for sound preachers but thank god for sound students uh that learned how to go into the word um, one of my favorite Bible accounts is in the book of Acts. Uh, it speaks about the Bereans. The Bereans heard the apostles preach, um, but what they knew was they heard it and they went to the scriptures for themselves. So my, my encouragement is um, search the scriptures. And also with searching the scriptures, one great thing to do uh, for life as a Christian, put yourself in the Bible. Um, as we read the story here about the death of Jesus, put yourself in that particular story um, itself. Put yourself in that particular account. Um, it'll help you appreciate the Lord all the more, and it'll appreciate salvation, and it'll appreciate grace, and um, it'll teach you how to walk um, a little bit. And it's not that you're walking based on what you hear Brother John say, Brother Ezra, Brother Manny, but what you really learn from the Word itself, and what you really hear Holy Spirit is saying in your, in your heart. And in your life, and um, I've said this multiple weeks, um, get to know Holy Spirit. I know sometimes we know we hear His voice, and we might struggle with listening to Him from time to time. But um, grow to know Him, grow to love Him, grow to let Him lead you. All I know is this: in this day, especially in this day of COVID, I just thank God for each day we have. Um, Amen. At the end of the day, it don't matter how old you are, uh, we we could have died in this last year. Uh, as yeah. We, we, we could have died. So the fact that we're here, I, I just thank God. And if, if the Lord takes me tomorrow, I thank God for the days he had me here or whatever the day is. Um, I, I mean, I don't look forward to dying, but I always say as Christians, we ought to have a hope. <laughs> we have a hope. Whatever day it is, as long as it's in the Lord, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, at the, I'm 37. I thank God for that. But you know what? I got people mm. that I know that didn't make it to 30. I mean, people that didn't make it to 20. So the days that I have, and I pray the Lord give me at least 50, 60 more years, but whatever the Lord says, each day is his. I guys will be going into the end and pray <laughs> that will be done by our very own brother Manny. Dear God, I just thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity just to be in your presence, just read your word. I pray, Lord God, as we continue to dive into your word, do this, give us wisdom, knowledge, understanding. And that it won't be this checklist, Lord God. It'll just be for a transformation of our hearts and our minds. I pray, Lord God, that you protect us throughout this week, through coverings, Lord God, physically, spiritually, and emotionally, and that you would give us a hunger for your presence, like that you would give us the opportunity to share your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you guys so much for coming back on this journey with us to continue to learn each and every single week, to dig more deeper, to educate ourselves, iron to be able to sharpen iron. Thank you so much, Brother John and Brother Manny, for coming in to be a part of the conversation. If you haven't already, like the video, subscribe if you're new, turn on your post notifications. This is Motivation for Young Christian. I'll see you guys Friday with another video, part two of how important are the roles of women in the church. See you guys in the next video. Peace.